Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying a uh, variation of the Bird of Prey and this is going to be an October Caddis coloration of this pattern. This one comes from a gentleman named Rick Anderson out of California. And we're going to be tying this one on a Mustad C49S but if you want to use something else like a Daiichi 1120 or a TMC 2457 that'll be a great hook. You want something with a nice curved shank it's going to give you a nice uh, caddis appearance so you can uh, fish this basically start fishing this type of fly uh, mid-september all the way up to the end of november works fairly well there's a few other variations of the bird of prey including like a black brown olive uh, this is the october caddis variation one of my favorites don't forget to leave a comment below and I'll get your name entered into the next draw for some decals and some of the flies that we tie on the channel. All right, let's have a look at the material list and get started. Let's get started. We're going to start off by putting a fresh hook in the vise and we're going to be using a Mustad C49S and I've already gone ahead and put a bead on this one. Now for this fly, normally when I'm tying on size 6 like this I'd probably go up to a 4.6 or 4.8 millimeter bead but I've kind of slightly undersized this one with a 4 millimeter, millimeter bead. For thread we're going to be using a brown olive and basically you just want something that's going to kind of match the peacock hurl at the head of the fly. So we're going to start by putting on a base layer of thread. I'm just going to start behind the bead and wrap down to about the barb of the hook. We just want to hang that over top, clip off that tag end. So for the tail we're going to be using a plume from a partridge, Hungarian partridge. You just want to strip off all the fluff off the sides. You can save that phyllo plume for another pattern if you like. And we're just going to stroke all the fibers back and we're going to put two or three loose turns of thread over top of the uh, feather. And we just want to kind of pull that until we've got the length that we want. We want kind of a short stubby tail on this. And then we'll go ahead and we'll wrap that down tight. And this way it kind of keeps all your fibers nicely together and it also keeps the feather on top of the hook shank fairly easily. So we'll just kind of wrap that up to behind the bead just to kind of keep everything uniform on the hook shank. We'll clip off the tag end and we'll clean up the wraps on that a little bit. I'm going to tie in a rib. For this we're going to be using a strand of pearl flashaboo. If you have some other mylar um, or maybe some mirror flash that would work well for this as also. And we'll just wrap that down into the tail. And we'll come back up about a bead length behind the bead. And that's where we're going to start our dubbed body. So for this one you've, you've got a bunch of different options. For this one I decided to go with the UV shrimp pink. And just looking at my inventory, I've got actually a few different shades in the same product. So this one's a little bit more on the orange side. I've got some other ones that are a little bit more pinkish. So if it's a little bit more pink, you might want to switch up and go with like a UV hot orange or um, something else that's going to be a little bit more, more appropriate. So less pink, and more orange. This one's a nice shade of orange and it's got the UV in there. So we're just going to go ahead and start dubbing that onto the thread. And what I like to try and do is uh, create a, a nice taper on this one. And for the October caddis, I don't mind if it gets a little chunkier. You know, you're getting towards the end of the season and uh, fish are looking to stock up on some bigger prey items. And something like this is 
pretty hard for them to resist. So we're going to try and keep that tapered with a, we want to kind of finish close to the same uh, diameter on the body as the bead is. It gives that a nice tapered look. You just want to kind of try and get that as gradual as possible. That looks not too bad. If you want to come in afterwards and trim that off a little bit just to clean it up, that's that's okay. We're going to put a secondary color on the body here. So for this one, I'm going to be using a uh, tan ice dub. And this one has the UV in it as well. And we don't need a lot. And basically, we're just going to fill in the gap between the orange and the bead. Uh, you just want to keep in mind while we are going to fill that, we're not going to fill it very densely. We want to leave a little bit of room because we still have to put a soft hackle uh, up front as well as a head of some peacock pearls. So you just want to fill it in, but you don't want to pack it in, I guess. So we've got in the tan. And next we're going to take our ribbing and we're just going to segment that. I'm just going to pull the rib up with nice open loops. Probably want to get five or six up there. And then we'll tie that off right at the head. And now I just like to make sure that I go behind and in front of that just to make sure that it's locked in place. We'll trim off the excess. And then we'll just take our thread and we'll pack that a little bit so we create a little bit of room to tie in our soft hackle. So for our soft hackle we're going to take another pheasant feather. This one's a little bit more um, appropriate for a soft hackle. The one I used on the tail is one that I probably wouldn't use for a soft hackle. Um, if you buy a package or a full skin you'll often find that you've got a lot of feathers that aren't exactly appropriate for soft hackles for so you can use those for things like legs and tails they're perfect for that so we just peeled off the fluff on that feather and created a tie-in point and we'll just run our scissors over that top edge just kind of pull all those fibers down or backwards and just when we wrap that it's going to create a nice uh, cupped soft hackle over the body of the fly We'll just give that a wrap. You're probably going to get anywhere between one and a half to two wraps with a hackle. And the idea of it is to get a nice distribution of the uh, fibers around the circumference of the fly, but it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes they clump up a little bit, especially when you're putting more materials over top. So we'll just bind that down, make sure that that stem is secured. We'll come underneath and trim off the excess we'll stroke everything back and just tie it down a little bit just create a little bit of space that we can tie in our peacock curl so I've said it many times before but for peacock curl I prefer to use uh, the eye stems and um, just pull it directly off the stem rather than using the strung so we're going to take four hurls for this one and we'll trim the the uh, uh, feet off that, I guess. And we'll tie those in with a little bit of room. So we're going to trim those flush with the bead. And so now what I want to do is I want to take those hurls and kind of wrap them around the thread a few times and this will help give a little bit of extra strength to the hurls because uh, they can be fairly brutal so I mean you don't have to do um, this step if you don't want to and it can be a little bit tricky but it does give the peacock hurl a little bit of extra added strength so we'll tie those off make sure we get on both sides of those underneath and over top just so that they're locked in place and we'll 
cut those off once we're comfortable with uh, how secure they are. And then we're going to grab our whip finish tool and we'll whip finish this fly. So probably want to give a fairly liberal dose of head cement on here. And what I like to do is just put the cement right on the thread wraps and let it soak in and uh, soak under the peacock curls a little bit. And it just kind of helps um, give that fly a little bit more durability. So you can see when you put the head cement on there, it kind of gets sucked into the thread wraps and into the peacock curl a little bit. But there you go, there's Rick Anderson's Bird of Prey, and this is the October Caddis variation. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.